ASU was, uh, I think, uh, has that reputation also better than Northeastern. And obviously, as I said, that my constraint was uh, the budget as well. I have been interested in web development since my school days. So I pursued computer science in VTech for that reason only. And it should have the required job opportunities for the type of curriculum I am looking for. Like if I am looking for user interface, so there should be job opportunities there in that area nearby. I had been planning for three years because of COVID, I couldn't go. I was very sure why UX and where UX. Like I had built two portfolios, I remember one was the web based. I started first with shortlisting what kind of projects I need to show. It was not majorly about the design, like I should show something colorful only in the end. It should be about the think thought process that has to be there. I think June was the app time to start it. Because like I think uh, we submitted all the applications by August first week itself. Before Ace My Prep, I had contacted three other services. They were not allowing me to apply for something which I am looking for exactly. Hi guys, welcome to AMP Podcast and today we have Anjal Faryani with us. She is following her dream and going to ASU, right? Right now, Arizona State University. And let's see how her entire journey unfolded. So first of all, welcome Anjal. Welcome to the AMP Podcast and thank you so much for agreeing to do this podcast with us. Right? So first of all, Anjal, can you just give a brief introduction about your profile? What did you do in your bachelor's and how did the study abroad plan come through? Yeah, so I have uh, done my B.Tech in Computer Science from Ajay Rajasthan mm -hmm. and then I pursued uh, my job in Bosch as a software mm -hmm. engineer. Okay. I've been working in Bosch for three years and then because of COVID situations, I couldn't uh, as such pursue for higher studies that time as I wanted to pursue in US. Mm -hmm. Decided for me. Then after that, uh, finally decided okay, this year I could try once. Mm -hmm. So somehow I got in contact with Ace My Prep. That's how the journey started then. We just got helped me with the uh, university. Mm -hmm. I had right. uh, like that I wanted to is uh, Jan intake only. Mm -hmm. If I don't get something in Jan, then only I'll go with the second intake because I don't have to do so I think right. I started around in June with my profile mm -hmm. and uh, here in a, uh, Ace My Prep. I contacted you guys at, uh, in June mostly. Yeah. So then in June, I had my first session, like an introductory mm -hmm. session with Vijay Sir. And uh, there uh, he got me the universities and how I can pursue and what all things are, will be needed. Mm -hmm. so there were a few forms I had to fill, like right? So it was really helpful. In that way, like I did not have to manage my profiles on my own, like all the applications. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was managed by Sir only. So mm -hmm. I was just doing the guidelines. Okay, this has to be done by me, and this has to be written. This has to be added. All the details are. Right. So that's how applications were done, and then after that, for ASU, I had to submit a portfolio as well. Mm -hmm. So for the portfolio, I think my main pain point was that building the portfolio only mm -hmm. and i think uh, if vtsr would not have been pushing me that time like okay when will it be done that accountability has to be there if somebody applies on the one we mm -hmm. try to procrastinate it a lot at that time okay we'll do it tomorrow we'll do it tomorrow that but mm -hmm. i had that accountability to vtsr okay he'll be asking me weekly like whether it is done or not when will it be done right. Right. and the uh, required guidance that time mm -hmm. So that was really nice to have uh, that guidance, like what mm -hmm. we did, how to present it and all. Mm -hmm. Mainly portfolio was my pain point while applications. Mm -hmm. Other than that, everything else was smoothly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I think after that, uh, the process was with the visa. Right. Okay. So answer one question here. Uh, like let's go back a little bit right when you were trying to go abroad or so how did you finalize the course like which course would be the best for you okay so my profile has been in front-end development in uh like i have been interested in web development since my school days right so i pursued computer science in vtech for that reason only mm -hmm. and even in my vtech time i did my internships in uh like i had done two internships that time so I did it in uh, web development specifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, since design was always my forte and everybody, like all my professors, all my internship mentors, everybody had suggested me that I have that knack for uh, designing. So I should pursue something which is based on uh, user experience. So that is how I finalized, okay, user experience is something I want to pursue. And I had that interest in uh, 
the designing part how to make it more usable for people around if you are going to see the website it should be very easy to use it should be very intuitive so that had been my interest in my college days right so how i was like okay this is going to be my specialization mm-hmm. i came with my specialization very very clear to sir here like okay this is the course i want to pursue mm-hmm. and the curriculum as well so that's how Okay. So we just have one question for you here, right? So what was your first uh, review of Anshul's profile? She had got experience as well, right? And she had a good BTEC score as well. But the only problem was, I think, January intake was a priority. So what was your first inference, a first review of her profile, and what was your next game plan? So first thing was that uh, when we looked into her profile, we looked into that she was not. She hasn't taken to. Opened up for GRE. She wasn't ready for GRE at that point, and uh, she didn't have a portfolio. And though we knew that she had a strict budget that she wants to like to target, I think the biggest concern was the timeline that we had. That it was just for January, so basically we had to approach it that manner. That okay, let's first look into the university. It will not be asking for a GRE, okay? And they have to be in a good. They have to be a good university. So that was one of the major areas where we had to research. Um, then basically we had to also make in mind, keep in mind that she has a strict budget. Because most of the top universities didn't have uh, that uh, course available within the budget. So that was one of our big, major pain points, I would say. But uh, then basically after a bit of research and after looking into, we came up with around I think it was around twenty four universities that we could target. However, out of those twenty-four, there were only five or six that we could target for January. So that was one of the major things. Okay, let's look at, let's try to basically get into these three universities. Actually, there were three universities only. Only let's target to get into these three universities and try to plant them in January. Because most of the others had a September intake and not a January intake. And luckily enough, uh, she was she basically finalized two of those universities for Jan, and we applied, and she got through both of them. So yeah, I would uh, I was going to ask the same thing. Like January intake is always a restriction answer, right? So I think on our first call also when we were guiding you, we told you that January and September will split the applications. Like if we get into January, great, but we will also help you for September intake, right? Uh, but in the January intake now, when you have gone through the process. What all restraints did you feel? Like, what is the difference between January and September intake? As such, I didn't apply specifically for September. Like, I was putting up applications that time. Mm-hmm. I had just started with my third application, and that time I got the admit from ASU. Mm-hmm. So we put it a hold on uh, September intake. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. I might not have faced the issues for September as such because I didn't uh, start with the process for September at all. Luckily, right. I got it in July. Right. Okay. So I think uh, the problem segment here was that the less number of universities that adhere to your filters, right? So as B J Sir also told, uh, I think the first filter for you was the curriculum, right? M S user interface or M S C S with uh, interface specialization, right? So apart from curriculum, what were your other filters while finalizing the universities? My other filters were like uh, the location should be good, definitely. Like I remember B J Sir telling me for. One or two universities that this might not be a good location to be there for, and that's how we remove those options. So that is also one way of taking it. Like location should be proper, it should be safe definitely, and it should have the required job opportunities for the type of curriculum I am looking for. Like if I am looking for user interface, so there should be job opportunities there in that area nearby, which can be a good invest, which will prove to be a good investment for me in the course. Like. Because I'm not able to get the returns of this investment in the mm-hmm. job field, so it does right. not make. Sense. Oh, fair enough. Okay. And uh, when it comes to the two offers you got, which universities and which courses did you get an offer from? Like I had applied for two. One is Northeastern University, Boston. Mm-hmm. So that was Master of Science in Information Systems with a concentration in user experience. Mm-hmm. The other one is uh, ASU, definitely with Masters, uh, Master of Science in User Experience. So I got to do. So now comes the big question. Like Northeastern is a pretty great university as well, and Arizona State University is also pretty good. 
so how did you guys conclude ki we should go for asu rather than northeast state asu was uh, i think uh, has that reputation also better than northeastern and obviously as i said that my constraint was uh, the budget as well i had to be strict with my budget so asu had that budget friendly uh, way of dealing with my curriculum that curriculum was same and also master of user experience is more of my field than uh, ms is so i went ahead with ms in user experience we just have how did what was your first thought on deciding yes, okay first thing that i remember basically archer mentioning that she really wants to get into asu because of the of the of the curriculum so that was one of her major choices among all the university across both uh, uh, intakes theek hai so as soon as the we got through the review okay this is going to be one she is going to take that theek hai in terms of basic between northeastern and uh, asu another thing was that arizona being in near the closer to basically the what you call most of the hubs the treatment hub it would have been easier thing for her also even in the long term secondly we had a few universities as she mentioned available for joining take but i was comfortable with the location this for example something like kansas and all i didn't want to to apply so we actually moved them from the shortlist system that i am not sending over there got check okay. and uh, answer like many students of ours like there are quite a number of students who want to study user interface right ui ux graphic gui ui some kinds of few user interface programs but they, these students always face problems when it comes to shortlisting universities or even to go abroad or not go to us or not right because the option the market is very small right compared to an mba compared to a you know general mtech uh, or msc computer science so what actually motivated you or what will your advice be to other students who are going to pursue user interface why us it could be a great choice like i did my research a lot as i said i had been planning for 3 years because of covid i couldn't go so i was very sure why ux and where ux so why was definitely uh, that i said my interest has always been in web and also the designing part of web so that is why ux and where was uh, because uh, i remember going through europe universities as well i wanted to check out everywhere wherever there are options i checked a few options in singapore as well i checked for uh, australia as well on my own that time and uh, i compared the fee structure of those places and after the job how how much pay i am going to get compared to the fee that i am going to pay mm. so the job opportunities and the profiles they have yeah like i tried all these options like i had actually explored europe and australian options as well and some in singapore as well but uh, i got to like i got to the conclusion that the amount of fee that i am going to pay that to return mm-hmm. of investment will be there because uh, they have definitely job opportunities in ux there also it's mm-hmm. that the pay scale does not match as per uh, ux standards that we get in us right. even in india we won't get that much of pay for a ux designer compared to what a ux designer gets in us mm-hmm. so i made my priority that it has it's to be us only for that reason oh check okay. and what is the ultimate plan though like now you're going will study at asu right and after that do you want to work there for some time or just come back to india uh, for now i plan on working if i get a good job there definitely mm-hmm. plan on working there and i'm open for indian opportunities as well because uh, some of the us agency uh, companies mm-hmm. they recruit indians from there and they can work from here as well that's what mm-hmm. i have got to know from a lot right. of my friends mm-hmm. so that is also an option open for me Like mm-hmm. however the pay scale suggests and what mm-hmm. bit to say is a good opportunity at the end. Right, and uh, I think uh, your pro, your course right now user experience is also under STEM accreditation, right? Yes. So you will get a three year work visa instead of one, right? So uh, all of these nitty gritties are showed in the AMP process when we shortlist universities, right? So how did the process help you? Because we have spent time developing this process where each and every detail, like VJ told, location was his preference. Budget was your preference, so together we come down and shortlist the five universities. So, how did this process work for you? Did it suit you, and did it help you narrow down to the right universities? I think so. Yes, like getting into ASU itself is like it was a nice process overall. 
and i remember bugging vj sir asking uh, like northeastern is offering it this way and asu is offering it this way which one will be better mm-hmm. and uh, asu had a lot other options as well as an mm-hmm. ms in user experience is one thing there was one more i think in human computer engineering and with the concentration in user experience mm-hmm. i remember bugging him again and again asking like whether doing a concentration is good or doing the exact course is good so he very nicely explained okay if you want to pursue user experience you should go directly with the user experience degree instead of going through concentration methods mm-hmm. so that's how like it has always been a doubt clearing question i think is always there okay fair let's move towards the little application part right so you said that you had to build your portfolio right so you must have built a lot of things in the past 3 years right but accumulating everything to one portfolio is always difficult like how to showcase your best uh, things right so what difference did you feel or what your what are your pro tips for anyone who is building a user experience portfolio now what exactly works i think i'll explain first what my portfolio was all about mm-hmm. so like i had built two portfolios i remember one was the web based and because i was not sure which format will be needed so i started with the web based and i started first with shortlisting what kind of projects i need to show since i have experience in graphic design as well and in web development as well so i was a little confused like whether to uh, portray more of the graphic design or more of the web design in that case because both seem to be a good field for uh, user experience either way so then i stuck to uh, user experience in web development Mm-hmm. i had uh, done a lot of features here and there in uh, my projects as well in my personal projects as well mm-hmm. so uh, there was this limitation from asu saying that the portfolio should be maximum of 1 mb file mm-hmm. so to short put everything that you have done in 1 mb is i think uh, very very tough mm-hmm. it's there and also mm-hmm. so i shortlisted two of my projects and i did a detailed case study i wrote a case study on them Like okay. explaining how the thought process started, how the pro, uh, like, how the idea came for that specific feature, what I had to do, what was my role in that project, and what all technologies I had used. So that is how I built my portfolio. I gave a brief introduction first, then there was this content page which will tell, okay, this is the two case studies we are going to cover in that. Mm-hmm. So it took. Uh, it was not majorly about the design. Like I should show something colorful only in the end. It should be about the think thought process that has to be there. Right. Like, uh, keeping the portfolio in mind because what they want is like uh, what thought was there? Why did you come up with such a design? Mm-hmm. Not what is the final design, but why did you come up with the design? Okay, got it. Okay. Fair. Okay. We just know your input skill, like you who help her design the entire portfolio. So, what do these top universities look for? Like, Ansel's profile was very good. but if the if the you know portfolio didn't reflect that didn't reflect her good abilities she might have not gotten into top universities so what are the steps or how to maintain or curate this kind of portfolio to encapsulate the life's work within one mb as anjal said that is very difficult so what are the tips or how should people go about well uh, firstly portfolios can be of different sorts okay in her portfolio we had to basically uh, what i remember is she had some trouble with uh, getting the permissions for uh, using the doc doc in the documents and everything so it was that secondly we had to basically explain we had to identify what would be the right format to put across so i told her i'd rather than to explain to her basically first introduce what was the client looking for okay then give your background on what would be the process so she used to basically send me whatsapp pictures of uh, and from diagrams and everything and we do it can i put it in this manner yes you can use basically the use as much rough work that you have done to showcase your thought process and uh, how you came across to the final decision so that sometimes as we know rough work can help you plan out how basically how much work you have put in how much thought you have put in so that was a good uh, touch okay and then she would basically she had uh, created it in a proper uh, uh, graphical manner and then put a proper put coding and everything of course uh, one thing that we were unable to put was the i think the, the final one was the final design because that was way too big am i right 
the final designs were always uh, bigger than 5 mb or something so it's like uh, the whole portfolio won't be that much big so i couldn't put the final designs also okay okay so this is actually the major question that i have also received from a lot of students that should i just put the final design that i created or should i put the process that we went through to get through that final design and i think the answer is very clear the final designs will not be enough you have to put the process on how you came up with it that's brilliant that's brilliant because very niche amount of students only apply for your user uh, user experience it is growing every year and they need more guidance like this check okay. it now coming to the next part uh, actual uh, the next part of the application would have been sop essay hello right again you have a word limit of 300 words 500 words and you have to encapsulate your entire life into it right so and words words have to be very proficient very professional at the same time touching right so that uh, they are interested in giving you so how did that come about how did you feel about the sop system here and when you finally read the final sop how did you feel about the entire thing like i remember applying on my own last year i had half application written and i just stopped at the sops mm. point at the letter of recommendations definitely like that time it was a the big pain for me because as i said that accountability was not there last year so this year when i joined with ace my prep here so it was very easy to keep a track of all these things like uh, i just had to submit my recommendees numbers and uh, the details and uh, ace my prep took care of the recommendation letters properly and then i just had to get it signed and all the details i had to give like what all projects i have worked on with uh, the specific recommenders and what is my uh, relation with them how many years they have known me so all these details i had given and that's how uh, the recommendation letter was prepared in the end and then other than that sop sop was definitely something like uh, i was asked to i remember filling that uh, 12 question form uh-huh. which had to be filled like all the details like uh, my personal details what are my shortcomings what why do i why have i chosen the course so mm-hmm. i gave a very basic uh, language uh, mm-hmm. answers i think mm-hmm. i gave just a bit about myself in those questions and uh, the way uh, ace my prep had given the final draft of my mm-hmm. sop was really nice mm-hmm. i didn't have to edit much in that i think just here and there just my name or something like that had to be that spelling mm-hmm. had to be corrected i don't think other than that there were any corrections at all mm-hmm. so the sop was definitely given very proper and very professional manners okay But, perfect right we just have one thing here like the uh, like when anshul is applying for user experience program she has to submit a portfolio she has to submit an sop she has to submit a mark sheet etc so how much weightage do you think the sops play and how did what was your strategy to bring out the best of anshul in a sop Uh, so first thing first uh, the sops are going to be your first point of contact with the university so they need to be impactful so i remember pestering her basically over time time me asking her okay how would you basically give me a, give me some inputs about this i think for one of the university i even asked her to give her specific inputs for that uh, university because it again it is going to be the first point of contact that she would be having and uh, sops are the ones which are representing her in front of the admission panel so they are going to be the most important documents even more important than your resume right secondly a uh, portfolio basically gave the evidence yes she has the marks she has the lors and everything but the portfolio was a, is a, a representation of how she thinks how she works which is why it was the most important document after the sops to showcase her ability to understand a good requirement of a client and put it across in a systematic manner okay so for that for that reason we had to i had to ask her okay give me some inputs give me some input insights on what you have done how you have come across that what why do you basically uh, want to mention this as a reason of pursuing the course right so we did have a couple of interactions for that and then we were able to finalize the sops even for the lors i remember asking her give me specific insights about what kind of work you have done under that person so that when we are writing the lor it doesn't looks like a generic uh, statement we can give a background of we can this is related to 
both the SOP and what would be mentioned in our resume. Okay, that's perfect, I guess. So that was the order of preference because, uh, again, we have a lot of students who have to submit portfolio, maybe for design, like pattern design also, normal design also, and then use their experience also. So the point with that, a portfolio becomes a very integral part. And uh, to be very honest, there is not a set standard of portfolios in universities. They can have two or three ways. So the best way to present yourself will be the key to get an admin. So that's great. Okay, perfect. Now, Anshul, uh, one particular question that comes up a lot is that when to start for the January intake, right? You started in June, right? That is around seven months before the intake. And right now we are sitting in September comfortably with your offer letter. And I think we have three, four months to complete your visa process as well, as well right? So uh, what should be the ideal timeline according to you? Because when you started, you also received a very small shortage of universities for January, right? And the deadlines were very near. I think we progressed very fast. We started in June, July, August, September. Within three months, our offers are sorted. This is a very fast process in study of thought, right? Four months is brilliant uh, turnaround time. So what do you think? Should you have started more earlier or did you have some more time to start before, uh, like, you know, start after, I would say, like July or August? Like, uh, I think June was the apt time to start it. Mm -hmm. I gave my mm -hmm. eyes that time. Mm -hmm. And as soon as mm -hmm. I was done with my eyes, I contacted Ace My Prep. And then after that, it uh, was like, I think uh, we submitted all the applications by August 1st week itself. Mm -hmm. All the submissions were done. I remember uh, we just were saying, we, okay, this has to be done by August 1st week anyhow. We cannot wait till September. And I am very thankful that we didn't wait till September because that's how I got uh, the early admit. Like generally, uh, ASU had the deadline of 15th September, but I got the admit uh, letter itself before 15th of September. I got it around first week of September itself. Mm -hmm. So that is one plus point I think uh, applying early has. You get more time for visa process and everything. Right. You have the flexibility. Right. And uh, with your work schedules, like everybody, I think whoever uh, applies are mostly more working professionals only. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice to have somebody who's looking after, OK, pestering you, accountability is there. So it's good we are starting in June correctly. and. Uh, all the process can be done if you start in June. Perfect. See, so that's a good answer, I would say, because we also promote students to start early. It doesn't hurt you to start early. Simple, simple logic. You start early, you have better chances. And that's a brilliant point that you have caught the offer before the ASU deadline for applications. So I think that's a great achievement. And kudos to you also to have that, you know, leadership ability or taking that charge ability that you started looking for counselors so early. Because still, till now, we are receiving students for January intake. Trust me, we are still receiving. And now it will be very dangerous for us to accept those, uh, you know, students also because the visa is very compromised. Right, right now in November, September, if we apply, November will be the offer. And when will we do the visa? Right now, you have three months and I think that's pretty great. Now, coming down uh, to the final leg of this particular thing, now that you've received your offer, right? I think the I-20 is in the process and now the visa will be in process, right? So how is the how are things panning out right now? What clarity do you have or do you still have any doubts regarding the visa? Like my I-20 is here. I've already got the I-20 and visa appointments is also scheduled. Mm. So I'm signing uh, down to Hyderabad on 29th for my visa appointment. Okay. So I had this plus point that I already have a US visa. Just that mm -hmm. it has to be uh, changed to a F1 visa now. Mm -hmm. So I am going for that only. So mostly I have all the clarities. And I think Prachi has always been, a, I say she's very supportive in all these things. Like she has been clarifying my doubts, like what all financial documents I need. Because I think uh, that has been my doubt in the beginning. Okay, what all documents will be needed? When will it be needed? Mm -hmm. So it was like... Uh, it was very seamless for me, all the visa applications. Like, I am done with all my visa applications. DS-160 form is also filled. Mm -hmm. Service fee yeah. on the way to filling it. So that's also done, approx. So I think uh, it was very easy this way. Because, mm -hmm. again, I'll say, like, uh, she's there to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. I just have to provide the details. Perfect. When did you get your offer, by the way? ASU offer? The date? Uh, um, September, first week, as I said, second September, I think. Okay, so for 2nd September you got and by 15 September your visa uh, entirety details are booked. So I think that's pretty great pace because that needs a lot of documents. So I think you were also well prepared for the documents. 
and within 10 days i think you are done so i think you are going for the dropbox service right because you already had a visa yeah. perfect so can you just tell us a little bit about the dropbox service like how is it different from a regular student visa like uh, for regular student visa you'll have to go through the interview process as well like uh, from you have to take all your financial documents all the documents required your passport photograph everything has to be taken and right. you have to prepare for a visa interview they'll take an interview i think mm-hmm. uh, but since i already have one visa so i i'm skipping the interview part as of mm-hmm. now i just have to drop my documents in the drop box and my passport and the visa will be stamped and they'll send it to oh, that's because like that Yeah. so that's a good information because uh, a lot of students don't know about this drop box service to be very honest they go to that regular thing whereas the if you have an approved tourist visa also with it it helps you a lot to get converted into a tourist so take a perfect answer so now tell me are you excited about moving to uh, arizona and then you know experience this entire life like have you connected with some of the students there how's that going uh, like i have connected with the few students one of the students contact i got from ace my prep only i think uh, from prachi for accommodation and all the arrangements so i am in contact with him and there are few of my friends as well personally uh, from my office so i have been in contact with them so overall i am getting to know like uh, asu has lot of campus there like first impression i had was okay there is this college i have to go there everything goes on there only but later i got to know okay asu itself has so many campus in that city and you will have some classes in one campus some classes in the other campus so it is upon you which classes you take which semester so right now i am in that phase like looking for accommodations which is near to both the campus like easy to commute at least for both the campus so i am in contact with i'm trying to search roommates that's one of the okay. i think one suggestion here will be i think video will also agree networking is the key right because as soon as you land there if you have five people also that you know that can help you out that will be brilliant because not only accommodation then your part time work also gets sorted right that's what we are trying to do that's why prachi connected you with our previous students also because and students will fly to asu with you will also be connected to you because the networking part is the most integral part the best way to get jobs in us is reference okay so the reference system is very strong there okay perfect answer. so now when you look back to the entire three year journey to be very honest you have been trying for three years it was covid that delayed Right, but now do you think everything was worth it? Like you, we are paid counselors also. This is one point I wanted to address. That you knew that we were paid counselors. There are a lot of counselors that work for free also, or less cost than us. Right, but now as you said in September with an ASU offer, do you think it was worth it to invest money with us? I think so. Definitely, it was worth it because uh, I tried. I think before ASU my breath, I had contacted three other services. so oh, but it was free definitely but the point was they were not allowing me to apply for something which i am looking for exactly mm-hmm. they had their own partnered universities for which they will give uh, the applications and everything and like mm-hmm. help you apply mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. but uh, again i was very specific with my course from the beginning like i want to apply for this specific course this specific universities or something so mm-hmm. that's what uh, the flexibility comes with i paid services that that you are allowed to choose your own uh, university you are allowed to choose your own course mm-hmm. and i think it's definitely worth it to invest yeah get yeah. it not only that we work here to you know even if you choose any university any course we work here or our counselors are professional enough right that to help you get into those universities so it's not just about applying right that's why we provided the guarantee also so i think you know uh, counselors like vj sir and all are here who have this experience who can guide students to these top universities as well right so in, in the entire setup of you connecting with vj sir then your sp meeting you and then the visa also being done very fluently so i think this has been a stream uh, streamlined process very good for you and i think we want this exactly to be like this right so uh, yeah how was your entire journey with ace my prep like moving the money and all but how was the human interaction how was the counseling process overall journey was good like one major point was since i am working in bosch mm-hmm. the work pressure has always been very high for me yeah. i think uh, uh, this whole year was very busy for me so keeping a track of my applications was very tough mm-hmm. and after that ace my prep came in uh, with this thing like okay they'll take care of all the applications 
whatever comes whatever kind of communications has to be done with the university i'll get notified from ace my prep as well okay there is a progress in the application i'll get those uh, weekly mails whenever there is something done in the application i'll get those weekly mails okay this has been updated this is pending so you will have that checklist pending checklist of done things so it's very organized that way because the, i think if you're doing it alone we won't have that much of uh, hmm. checklist kind of uh, method followed okay this is done this is you'll always be messed up we'll always be confused okay this is pending what is pending what needs to be done next mm -hmm. so with ace my prep it was always like i knew what needs to be done next and what is already done okay okay and that's i think a huge compliment for us to create this system i think uh, for those to the back, back end team as well uh one last question here um anshul right so you have gone through this entire process right? like you like the entire uh, thing right but anyone who is starting new starting fresh to look for study abroad or so because you have done this process alone and you have done this process with a counselor so what are your uh, tips to them what are the basic things that they should get right before choosing university or starting this entire process first thing that everybody i think should know is what they want to pursue that is very very basic because i know people coming with up uh, coming up with okay we just want to go to us any course maybe but uh, i don't think that's the correct way of approaching it at least for me it was always like what course which place and what kind of placements that go that is going to offer me so that is very very basic it should always be the sequence of which course which city and which university then uh, rather than which uh, city then university and then the course it should always be the course first which you want to pursue because that's the thing that will help in long run otherwise if people are just going for us simply it does not make sense uh the shortlisting of profile happens on your talent your whatever you portray if you right. just simply choose any course obviously people are going to face rejections in that case so it is very very necessary to know what you are going for yeah, i think that uh, set of priorities that you have given set of filters that people should have and i think in that sense you were very sorted and we love working with students like you who have sorted priorities i don't want the course should be finalized or the university should be finalized but the outcome should be finalized this is the outcome that i require and accordingly we can help get you into the top university so i think that was great anshul uh, vijay your last words or your last review around anshul's profile and the entire process that we went through with him this anshul was a very straightforward and the good thing was that uh, She, though she was, she had some problems with the final, the, the time to basically to communicate and get things done. She knew exactly. Okay, if I am asking her to do it, she understood the re need and she was able to put it across. Yes, I agree. We did had a. We took some some time to come up with the uh, with the proposal with the portfolio, but it was a necessity, basically, and we knew okay. This is gonna be necessary, and it's a vital to our application. And though it took time, it was a good investment. Okay, and sometimes you cannot basically come up with a portfolio in one or two days. It takes time, so you have to be patient, and you have to basically just follow the process. perfect uh that's true and anshul uh, kudos to you to being straight forward to having your vision clear because that helps us narrow down and fast track the process because sometimes that people are confused although you have every right to be confused it takes longer and in an intake like january i think the uh, key here is space if we are first to apply you will be the first to get the admin one small question here uh, you also said that everything was informed to you via the emails but uh, how did you like that process where we use a the alternate email id that you also have the access you also have the access right so that you have complete transparency right because many of the agents here use portals right where you just get updates whether you got offer or not but we directly share the email id right so that if any update is there you would directly get the uh, any any update on your email as well so how how did that work with you like the transparency that we try to maintain i think that also helped a lot because uh, either way both of us could uh, see what is coming up next if there is any communication from the university at any point of time mm -hmm. like uh, i remember applying uh, then after that sometimes uh, due, due to my workload or something happens if i am missing some of the emails which are on priority i'll get this call from vidya sir saying okay there is this mail this has to be done so i think that common email id helps you in keeping a track if you miss something 
the least my prep will help with it okay to remind you because sometimes the emails go uh, do get missed because yeah. of a lot of emails yeah. being there so it is good to have a separate email id for all your applications and buddy keeping a track of that mail id mm-hmm. for you so right. it's definitely a good thing perfect okay great answer so this was it from our end right uh, any last comments on the service or anyone who is flying abroad any last things before we uh, end this podcast I think my overall experience was really nice and i just hope that all goes well further also like uh, and uh, i'll suggest uh, definitely people should try for ace my prep if they are looking for uh, some us any kind of universities i think abroad so it helps a lot to have somebody keeping a track and somebody being accountable for mm-hmm. Uh, so I think Achal, so we still have the process left. We will still be in touch with you till January until you fly off and you get the accommodation. We have to sort your visa. We have to get your visa and we have to sort your accommodation as well. So I think the process is still left. I think 20% of the process is still left. The journey has not ended yet. And we hope to continue this also. Once you reach ASU, we want you to uh, take care of the community there. We'll be sending more people there. right? So we okay. want you to be... Uh, you know, active there and connect with students because again, networking is the key. Your junior, your senior, anyone can get you a very good job if you have the right connects, right? So hope, hoping to build such kind of uh, you know high class communities because you guys you have worked with Bosch, you have a very good profile. You're going to ASU, so you are a little asset to any organization that you join, right? So we will definitely want to extract that value out of you, right? So hoping to more uh, such podcasts also. One podcast maybe we can do from ASU when to reach there. So that we can see how your life has turned out once we reach there. Okay. So yes. perfect, Ash. Good luck with your entire move, right? It was great connecting with you and brilliant points. I would say a lot of people who wanted to go for user experience will have a lot of value out of this podcast, right? So thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Thank perfect, Ashish. Thank you so much.